Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jerome. Um, today, the state of the HIV field is sort of rooted around um, ART, antiretroviral therapy, which is unfortunately an imperfect solution to the problem um, for many reasons. There's non-adherence, which stems from things like large daily drug regimen and the fact that people have to take these pills for the rest of their lives. Uh, there are potential side effects to the drugs, and lastly, but importantly, the drug doesn't completely eradicate the virus from the organism. Um, and so that's, that's sort of the problem that we have, is that we're unable to destroy the virus. Um, so why the, the, the doctrine of Globus Lab is really interested in the lymph nodes, um, and for a specific reason. So unfortunately, one of the reasons that HIV is, um, is able to withstand ART is because it's able to create sites in the body of immune privilege, we call them, and these are reservoir sites. Um, so the image right there to the right is a picture of a patient's lymph node, which was taken about two years after they started uh, ART treatment. And you can tell with the, the GAC P24 and the BCL6 signature um, that there's still a lot of HIV in the patient's lymph nodes. Um, and this is after two years of treatment, and the treatment was started um, very early after the onset of uh, viremia. So me and my fellow interns have been working with different cell types. The immune system is sort of a, a very complicated network of, um, composed of a lot of different players that all have very important roles. Um, so Jasmine will talk to you a little bit about natural killer cells, which are part of the innate immune system. Um, Aaron will talk to you about the B cells, which are the first component of the adaptive immune system. And then Mazuba and I will talk to you about T cells, which are also involved in the adaptive immune system. Uh, myself, have, I've worked on CD8, cytotoxic T cells. And so just to go over a little bit of basic biology on this, um, these T cells have what we call a TCR, a T cell receptor which recognizes molecules or peptides that are bound to class one MHC. Um, and they also have a CDA co-receptor which sort of uh, binds to the, to the MHC. So this interaction works to basically recognize an HIV peptide. Um, so once a CD4 or any cell is sort of infected, it will present a peptide to be recognized. Once the CDA is activated, it has, um, it has three methods of sort of incap incapacitation uh, the first being um, that it will try to suppress viral replication. It does that by secreting and releasing um, cytokines. And so, for, in for instance, CCL5 or RANTIS and MIP1 alpha or beta are really good molecules. Um, they suppress viral replication directly. TNF, TNF alpha and IFN gamma are um, recruiters, so they participate in bringing even more adaptive immune cells. The second mechanism is through production of cytotoxic granules, and so molecules like perforin or granzymes B or K will be secreted, and they can lyse the cell and cause necrosis. And the third mechanism is my personal favorite, the fast fast cell induction pathway, um, by trimerizing the fast molecules on the infected cell, it leads to an apoptosis cascade um, and therefore kills the cell. But that's not really understood very well today. Um, so what we do in our lab is sort of rooted in the fact that we've noticed a difference in the expression profiles of CD8s in the lymph node of patients and their blood. Um, so specifically here, you have a flow chart um, with perforin and granzymes, which I've shown you are sort of cytotoxic molecules. Um, and you can tell right here that the lymph node CD8s present much less perforin granzyme activity and secretion than the peripheral blood ones. Um, and so this led us to ask ourselves if that translated directly into less killing. Um, so that was my project. So I worked on this killing assay uh, for about a month. Um, and so I'll go through the initial workflow really quickly. Uh, so I took cells from patients. I took cells from both their lymph nodes and their peripheral blood. I separated the CDAs from the CD4s. I labeled two populations of the CD4s, CD4s being the cells that I would infect later on. Um, I label them with CFSE, which is what the flow separates, and then I pulsed one of those populations with HIV peptides um, so that they could be recognized as infected, and then I incubated the cells with the same patients, their own CD8s, to see uh, at different concentrations to look at the relative killing rates. 
Um, and so this would measure specifically the second mechanism of action. This would look at the perforin and granzyme killing activity of the CD8s and see if um, it translates directly into a difference in killing phenotype. Um, so this is a representative flow plot of what we ended up seeing. So if you look at the top, you have both, uh, you have both blood samples. So just to go through it really quickly, um, see on the left right here, the pulsed only cells are the cells that have the HIV peptide. Um, and so you can tell that the split is about 52, 46%. And on the right, we've incubated them with CD8s, the pulse cells. And you can see that the number of pulse cells goes down from 46 to 10%. Um, whereas in the lymph node, it begins at 14% and descends to 9%. So you can see a big relative difference in the reduction of CD4s. Um, so I did that experiment uh, in multiple, uh, with about a sample size of six, I think. And we ended up with this figure, um, which we were very happy with. Um, it basically describes and shows that there's a pretty evident decrease in the killing capacity of CD8s in the lymph node. Um, so the, the bottom, the x-axis is the effector to target ratio. And you can tell the less CD8s are in there, the more you can show, you, the more you can show the difference in the killing potential. Um, and the more, you know, the more CD8s you add, there's a saturation effect, which we expect. Um, so after that mechanism, I finished that about, um, about a few weeks ago. And so now I wanted to investigate the first mechanism of action, which is uh, suppressing bioreplication um, of, the CD4, uh, of the CD8s and testing if there's a difference in the phenotype expressions of these. And so this assay is a bit more complicated and takes a few weeks to run, but I essentially activate my CD4 cells with CD3, CD28. I infect them with um, the live virus, and then I culture for about a week the supernatant, and I check for P24 presence. And then on the last day, you run the ELISA assay to detect the, P2, the P24 antibodies. Um, so this is what we'd like the data to look like. We only have preliminary data right now, but you can tell that the CD8, the CD8 presence basically inhibits the beginning of the, the replication. Um, but what we hope to see, and maybe we won't, but is a difference in the um, inhibition capacity of uh, lymph node and blood CD8s. So to conclude, um, we've been able to legitimately see decreased killing activity in the CD8 T cells of lymph, uh, of lymph nodes compared to the ones in the peripheral blood. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm hopefully going to finish the viral inhibition assay and maybe see a difference in CD8 capacity to inhibit viral replication, maybe not. Um, that's, I guess, how science goes. And um, yeah, I'm excited to continue this.